Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and over there we have John Lewandowski. Hey. All righty. So as um, we said in our last video, which we released probably about five to ten minutes ago, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we were going to talk about the Predators trying to strike a deal with Seattle. Now, this all stems from the Victor Arvidsson trade. So if you think NHL teams are playing around like they did the first time with Vegas, they are not. They learned from their mistakes. Right. The You have a choice of protecting seven forwards, three defensemen, and one goalie, or eight skaters, forwards or defensemen, and one goalie. First year and second year professionals and unsigned draft picks are exempt. We know all of this because of our video we've already done. Right. The one thing we don't know is who they're going to pick of what's left. Now, the Kraken also have an exclusion window from July 18th to the 21st to interview and potentially sign pending free agents who are left unprotected in the expanded, expansion draft. If they play sign a player in that window, it counts as their pick from that player's former team. Now, that is interesting. Yeah. Because that may be a route Nashville might want to try going. Now, the problem with that is convincing them to do so. But right. the now route Nashville, I think, is going to go is trade, trade and hope to get them to take Duchesne, which it reads in this article. All right. In that case, Boyle said in the conversa in my conversations with Seattle, if Arvidsson was not protected, he would have likely been taken by Seattle. So if that's who we would have lost, we now have a second and third round draft picks in the future. That's pretty good conversation for Victor. Hope that hopefully we can turn into some good players pretty soon. Right. With that being said, that is a good idea to have if you if if this is if this is the case. Now I'm going to say this, like I said in the video when we did talk about Arvidsson's trade, that doesn't make it sting any less. Right, of course not. All right. Now, Hoyle says he will continue to speak with Francis. Now Francis wants um at home really bad. Now, the one thing I could see them doing, and I don't like this at all, is trading Echo to right. Seattle and saying, you can have Echo. You're eating all his cap, but you're taking Duchesne in the, in, in, as your pick. Right. Because if you take uh, <laughs> Johansson, this trade is no. Right. The stipulation or the condition of the trade. You are allowed to put special conditions in expansion trade. Yep. Now, here's the thing about that. Arvidsson, like we said, had a major drop in points and production. Hopefully, going to um, LA will help him get and uh, maybe even revitalize guys like uh, uh, Kopitar and um, Dustin Brown. Right. Um, so that gives them a chance. The other thing is. Um, you know, there is some something to be said that there is a bit of a log jam in our system as far as forwards go and as far as defensemen go. So getting rid of, say, even if you say, hey, look, um, I'll give you Fabro, right? Like Fabro. Okay, yeah. Fabro, you're not panning out here. You could go. We can't sign you. We're going to let you go. Here's an RFA. Um, you can sign them to whatever you want. Blah, blah, blah. Fine. Tolvanen is exempt from this. Because he is a first-year pro. He was in the running for the Calder. So he is exempt. We do not have to worry about losing Tolvanen. Um, imagine this though, looking 
forward, you may have to throw a third or second round pick in there to sweeten the deal of that $8 million hit. That is always going to be a thing. Right, it is. Now, going forward, for all of us, one of the big things is we're going to keep a heavy eye out for news. Um, I would also like to take this time to uh, kind of announce that we will have live content next Thursday regarding the Admirals. Live content regarding them. Whether yep. it be in the arena or here at our set, we have not decided yet. We'll figure that out when we get to it. Right. Um, that'll take some little bit of work to see what happens. But um, all of the all in all being said, um, I think that looking forward, things are looking up. And yeah, if they're they not are. Look, and if they're not looking up, they're still looking up because. If we're going through a rebuild, that's just a road bump in the way to going back to the top. That's always what it is. Um, sometimes right. it doesn't pan out, like with teams like uh, uh, Detroit and Buffalo, who've been struggling to rebuild. Um, but um, obviously, I've got full faith in the Predators drafting system. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been as competitive as we have for the longest time. Right. Um, since 2008, the Predators have only missed the playoffs three times. So that's a long stretch to not miss the playoffs and a long stretch to, you know, be going this route. Um, the one and Duns are getting old, though. Yeah. But I can also feel that way for the Washington Capitals, Winnipeg Jets, and a few other teams who keep getting to the first round and then getting out. Right. You're missing that one piece to get you over. And maybe they'll find it in the draft this year. Maybe they won't. Who knows? But we'll find out. Maybe they'll find it in free agency or a trade. Who knows? We just it, – it, it's a matter of having faith in the system and faith in the process. And that's what we got to do. As yep. much as I'm sitting here sighing in pain and relief. And trust me when I say sighing in pain – John knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I mean, the scouts we have just been phenomenal for the last decade. I mean, you just look at it, even like before 2008, look at Shea Weber, Ryan Suter, Ted right. Marine, um, uh, for lack of a better term, Alexander Radulov. Um, he became a star elsewhere, but he was still drafted by Nashville. Right. Um, there are copious amounts of guys who get drafted. Like Yossi, he was drafted in the second round. The second round, you draft Roman Yossi, and you have a Norris winning defenseman. You right. don't see that that often. You see guys like Drew no. Dowdy and 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 uh, Hedman and and stuff like that winning it in their first round picks. Right, they are. And, and you know, um, PK Subban was a first round pick. You know, these all things they all play into each other. It just shows that the scouting and drafting ability of Nashville has always been good. If they're struggling in their rebuilding, they always draft well to, to yep. cre create a competitive team where they're lacking. I'm okay. going to say this right now. They are not lacking in defense. Start drafting high-scoring forwards. All right. It is a very big necessity on this team. We haven't had a guy in period in the NH in Nashville's history have a 40-goal score. Never. Right. We need a 40-goal score. Never in Nashville's history have we had a 40-goal score. We need a 40-goal score. Excuse me. Uh, well, that happens. Natural body function. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, as we say, we all have fun here. We all enjoy what we do. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here. Right. Um, with that being said, we got to get going. I got to go bag a moose. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, I joke, I, I know I look like I'm ready to go hunting, but that's about, what, four or five months away, so at least here, um, the one thing I wanted to really say is, uh, you know, Nashville, don't be worried about this trade. Right. Imagine if we get a guy who's a 34-goal scorer every year and say the next year we get a guy who's a 10-goal scorer. Right. And up a bunch of assists. If we get that out of those two picks, we won. Right. Because there's no way if you got a guy who's a 
30 goal scorer and probably puts up 10, 20 assists. That's 50 points. And then you get another guy who puts up maybe 30 points that, right. that, out of a trade of a guy who only at, at his max and high point of his career scored 60 points. You know, you need, but you need those goal scorers or you're not going to win. Just look yeah. at Tampa Bay. Just look at Montreal with Cole Caulfield. They wouldn't have been there without him. No. Now, we are going also, probably next week, we're going to be also releasing a draft video of our top. Uh, we're going to do a top five of every position points-wise. And that's going to be our scouting video. So top yep. five of each position will put us around 30 players or so. Um, we're also going to have your uh, uh, diamond in the rough kind of thing. So trust me when I say this, there are going to be guys in there that are not projected to go in the first round. Right. That are top scorers. And, and the reason I put them there is because when you draft a top scorer, you're sometimes gambling. But we'll see. Also, let's yep. just see. Maybe Tomasino, Arvidsson, 2.0. May never know. But Grimaldi, he's taken over that spot, kind of. Right. We'll just see what happens. But other than that, this has been from Milwaukee and Nashville. We'll see you guys later in the week. Go check out our YouTube page. We have tons of content out there and coming out soon. Uh, we just released the AHL Arena video. I'm sorry. I've been busy with the fourth and then my birthday and I needed a break. Just literally just everything a break for one day. And I was supposed to put it out that day. So right. I apologize. I had been just gassed. I had nothing left in the tank. I was running on E and gas was $20 a gallon. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so I was just tired. I apologize. Um, that's on me. It's my job to make sure those things get out. They will be out now. Uh, we have a video scheduled for Friday as well to release. Uh, that is the ECHL home jerseys. AHL, jer AHL Arenas is out now premiering. Uh, go check that out if you're an AHL fan. See what I said about your arena. Um, so, uh, or me and John said about your arena. Right. Mm -hmm. um, John also uh, added a lot. We are both very heavy into architecture. I believe our next <laughs> video will be the NHL Arenas, AHL home jerseys, and ECHL road jerseys. So that'll be our next set that we're doing. Um, and we will be releasing them probably at the end of the month. Yep. Please just give me time to find what I'm looking for. Um, when we do NHL arenas, that is a two part system. We're going to do inside and out in a different system. So we're going to grade the inside. And we're going to grade the outside. So that is our personal choice. Um, we don't do rankings because we don't feel that you need to be ranked based on the 32 team out right. there. It's not fair to anyone to be ranked lower because we personally choose someone else higher. But we would think that that person would be higher because of something else, which is why right. we choose grading so that, you know, if it's a fail, it's a fail. If it's, you know, Anything beyond a fail is a pass. Right. So you can't really fail in that. So we'll see you guys uh, probably tomorrow. Probably be live tomorrow for one video. So see y'all tomorrow. Peace.